Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Selamat sejahtera. How are you this morning? Semua ceria? Smile? Okay. Um, before we proceed <coughs> with our lecture this morning, uh, let's uh, do a, a quick revision of what we have uh, covered so far and uh, the previous lecture. Okay. So what I want you to do is to take about two minutes or three minutes to discuss or to summarize the last lecture on Monday, the previous lecture on Monday. And um, you don't have to do it alone. So let's discuss with your partner sitting next to you. So we will be doing this uh, regularly, yeah? very often in, in, this, in this class. So just turn to your partner next to you, to your friend next to you, and I'll give you two or three minutes to summarize our previous lecture, what you have understood, or what if you have a muddy point or something not clear from the previous lecture, also you can, uh, you can highlight. And uh, after three minutes, I will ask one or two of you to come forward here and summarize for the class. Can we start now? So maybe you want to shift. Okay. Three minutes, not more than three minutes. You don't have a partner, maybe I have to sit next to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, okay. Oh, so your oh your lifan friend. It's okay. It's okay. So you just follow. You don't have to participate. No problem. You can refer to the notes, no problem. So we are um, trying to summarize. We, we are trying to summarize our previous lecture. So we just uh, do it in pairs, okay? So we can do it with your friend sitting next to you. Mariam, ibu depan. Ashraf, you have to find someone sitting next to you because I, I want you to discuss and summarize the, the important points from the previous lecture. Okay? So you have to sit next to someone. So you have to partner with Mariam. So basically, try to uh, summarize, buat ringkasan apa yang ya, apa ni yang you faham daripada previous lecture, important points from the previous previous lecture, and try to explain in two or three sentences, okay?
Okay. Three minutes up. Okay, now can I get two? Uh, maybe this time uh, I'll give the privilege to Wen Yang and maybe Najwa. Where is Najwa? Najwa? Okay. Can you please come forward? Don't be shy. We are friends. We are all friends, right? Okay, don't be shy. Najwa and Wen Yang. Don't be shy, okay? Um, please come forward. And imagine yourself, you are me teaching the class, okay? You just summarize in two, three sentences, yeah? two, two, three sentences, what you have understood. That's all. And uh, if you have uh, some points that you are not clear also, you can tell the class. Okay, maybe when young, you want to start first? Come. Quick. To start, good morning, class. Good morning, everyone. Last previous, eh? Last? Actually, the lecture was about the Newtonian. Newtonian is a. Depend on the temperature, but it depends on to the surrelate and the time. Uh, example of the Newton, New, Newtonian is uh, fruit juice and milk and honey. When the temperature increase, so the shear stress is decreased. Shear stress when when the temperature increase, sure. the viscosity, the viscosity <coughs> will decrease. Yeah. Okay, at least uh, a few points there. Okay. You feel nervous? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is a practice. Good practice, right? Okay. Thank you, Wen Yang. Najwa. Okay, Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Uh, Assalamualaikum, saya Ibu Malin, everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything. Uh, okay, from last previous lecture, uh, what can I say about um, uh, uh, Prof. Karim uh, had uh, said about importance of sharing in flow behavior. Uh, so, uh, what I note uh, from this lecture is uh, the importance of sharing is to know the different type of processes we need to apply to the uh, fluid. Okay. Is that all? Okay. Do you have any question or any... What, what are the muddiest point or something that you don't understand? Maybe one or two points you don't understand and maybe you want, uh, you want me to maybe clarify or uh, further explain in this class. Yeah. So we are giving you the chance now if you don't understand anything from the previous lecture because actually we shouldn't proceed with the lecture if the previous lecture if you don't understand a few things or a few points from the previous lecture because this lecture actually is we, we, we build up from your understanding from the previous lecture okay so do you have any question you want to ask from the previous lecture Okay. Uh, and about uh, shear okay. How to different? Okay. And you look nervous as well. No, I'm very nervous. Right. If I were to summarize for you, it's very simple. In the previous lecture, actually, we talk about the different types of flow behavior. Right. So we should start, you know, giving uh, the, the overall picture. We talk about different types of flow behavior. Remember the first demonstration that we did, Aziza demonstrated that, you know, we have three, three or four samples. Honey flow differently from the source. 
the sauce in the bottle, sometimes you have to shake or you have to tap before it can start to flow. So obviously, every day, we will encounter, we will see, uh, we will you know, use different types of food, having different types of flu behavior. And um, when we classify the different types of flow behavior, we have two uh, groups. One, we call it Newtonian. The other one, broadly, we, we classify it as non-Newtonian. Newtonian simply means the shear stress or the viscosity is independent of shear rate. So imagine that you, you are stirring a liquid in a cup or in a beaker or in a container. Okay? If you stir it slowly and you measure the viscosity, it will give you one value. If you stir the liquid faster, you measure the viscosity again, it will still give you the same value. So the viscosity is independent of shear rate. Okay? Then let, let's measure the viscosity at room temperature by using this instrument. So you measure at room temperature, it will give you one value. When you increase the temperature, let's say to 70 degrees Celsius, and you measure the viscosity again, it will give you a different value. And this time the value will be smaller or lower because as a general rule, when you increase the temperature, the viscosity would decrease. So those are actually important points that we have learned in the previous lecture. Then we have another group of uh, uh, material of food or liquid. When, um, the, when we measure the viscosity at different shear rates, the viscosity would, would change, would be different. So in this case, the viscosity is dependent on the shear rate. We increase the shear rate, the viscosity would change. We increase the shear rate again, the viscosity would change. Whether it would decrease or it would increase, depending on the types of the fluid that we measure. So, this um, This is the different types of flow behavior. So we have a straight line. The straight line goes through the origin. So meaning that when we increase the shear stress, shear stress is actually the force that we apply, right? Over divide by surface area. So we apply the shear stress. There is a corresponding uh, shear rate for each shear stress that we apply. We start from this point we, and we increase the shear stress. There would be a corresponding increase in the shear rate. So when we plot the graph, when we get straight line, it means that there is a proportional relationship, direct relationship between shear stress and shear rate. So we get a straight line goes through zero. So we can describe this line with a simple equation which is y equal to mx and the slope of this line is the viscosity so at each point on this line the viscosity is constant so now if we change this graph we plot the viscosity on the y-axis and the shear rate on the x-axis we will get a, st a straight line this way because when we increase the shear rate the viscosity would be constant. So that's the meaning of constant viscosity for a Newtonian liquid at, at a fixed temperature. At a fixed temperature. Okay? But zero-plastic, now we have a zero-plastic. A lot of food, a lot of sample, uh, a lot of examples in, uh, in uh, food uh, products. They display uh, the zero plastic behavior. This is very common. This one is very common. So here, when we increase the shear rate, uh, sorry, shear stress, there is more than proportional increase, more than proportional increase in shear rate. 
Okay. So compare this straight line and this line. So the viscosity at each point on on the graph actually decrease when we increase the shear rate. So the viscosity value is different at different point on the curve. So that, that is why we say for non-Newtonian flow, so this uh, all this line other than the straight line, dilaton, pseudoplastic, Bingham plastic, and Kesson type, they are all non-Newtonian. Which simply means the viscosity changes as a function of shear rate. As we, as we increase the shear rate, the viscosity also would change. In the case of plastic, the viscosity would decrease when we increase the shear rate. In other words, we, we, we also describe pseudoplastic as shear thinning. Because when we increase the shear, the liquid becomes thinner. Or in other words, the viscosity decreases. The opposite of pseudoplastic is dilaton. Dilaton behavior, flow behavior, uh, dilaton flow behavior is not common for food. We don't have many examples. If you read a book, maybe you will find example like uh, they say starch. You know, we start with starch, slurry, then we cook the starch, we heat the starch, then the viscosity will increase because the starch granule will start to swell. So that is perhaps one example that we can we can use we can see we can uh, we can uh, use for dilaton for food product, but it's not very common. The most common one is pseudoplastic, uh, maybe Newtonian, maybe Bingham plastic, or Kesson type uh, plastic. Kesson plastic or uh, Kesson type plastic, uh, maybe for. Usually, the, the, the product or the liquid would appear very viscous, very thick and viscous. So, uh, melted chocolate usually display Kesson type or Bingham type plastic. Depending on the types of ingredient, that we make. and for example, we have sugar, we have fat, the amount of sugar, all those uh, mixture of the ingredients would affect the actual flow behavior of the product. But um, another thing that you can see from this graph, you can see pseudoplastic, Newtonian, and dilaton, they start from zero. What does that mean? Start from zero, meaning that the moment we apply the stress, the force, the sample, it will initiate flow. The, the, the product or the material will start to flow the moment we apply the stress, Im immediately. So when you say pour the bottle containing the honey, it will start to flow. You don't have to wait or you don't have to shake or you don't have to <laughs> tap. It will start to flow. But Notice for Bingham plastic and Kesson type plastic, the line start at not at zero but at somewhere on the y axis. So there is certain value, certain minimum value, certain minimum stress, certain minimum force that we have to apply before we can initiate flow, before we can start flow. So this is what we call, anyone? What's the term to describe? A minimum force required to initiate flow. Anyone? Ziao Bin? Uh, not fair. Yesterday I asked you. Today I asked you again, right? Because I still remember your name. 
Okay, what is the term to describe a minimum force or minimum stress required to initiate flow? Anyone? Anyone to come to the rescue to help Ziao Bin? Sarah, any idea? No idea. Um, uh, okay, uh, what's your name? Andrew, okay, Andrew. Sorry, again? Yield stress. So yield stress is defined as minimum amount of stress or minimum stress required to start flow, to initiate flow. Just like, remember, the, the reason why we do the demonstration because I want you to remember in your, in your mind. So remember when we try to pour the sauce from the bottle, sometimes from your experience, maybe you have to shake or you have to tap, right? That is the minimum force required. Otherwise, the, 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 if you don't apply that amount of stress, the sauce would stay forever in the bottle. So you have to overcome that. You have to apply a, a stress above that value. Above that value, then it will start to flow. But what is the difference between Kesson type plastic and Bingham plastic? You can see from the line, right? One is like that, one is straight line. So how do we, try, how do we interpret that? What is the meaning of, of the different shape of the line? Anyone? I'd like to see volunteer rather than calling your name. But I have all the names here. Okay, this time, oh, ada dua Farah. Farah Shamimi dengan Siti Farah. Farah Shamimi? Mana? Farah Shamimi? Okay, Farah. Farah Shamimi. Siti Farah? Okay. Kalau Farah Shamimi tak boleh terangkan, dan kita minta Siti Farah pula. Okay, Farah Shamimi. How do you interpret or what do you understand by by these two different shape of uh, Bingham plastic and Kesson type? Louder. Don't don't be afraid, you know. Don't don't be afraid to be wrong. It's better be wrong than just keep quiet and pretending that you know. I want to teach you to be brave, to be confident. Okay? Louder, louder. More viscosity. When you say more viscosity, maybe not not right. Maybe more viscous or less viscous. Okay. What do you mean by more viscous than the Bingham plastic? Okay, I give you a hint. I give you a hint. Now we have to apply a minimum stress to initiate flow to start flow. Then what happens now when it start to flow? What happened to the viscosity? Decrease or decrease? Huh? It will. Someone raised it. Ah, ah, Kitty, yes, Kitty. Louder, Kitty. De decrease. Kesson type will decrease as a function of time and the function in this case we are looking at shear rate first uh, we, don't, we don't talk about time yet because that will complicate things okay uh, can you repeat that uh, that that should correct so can you repeat that yeah what happened when uh, the, the the fluid start to flow with shear rate first okay then the bingham remain constant just like as if 
just like as if it is a Newtonian, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Bingham Cassen type plastic be behave after after we apply the minimum shear stress, and it will start uh, it will start to flow, and this time it will start it will flow just like a pseudo plastic type. Bingham plastic, you have to apply a minimum shear stress before it start to flow. But when it starts to flow, it was it will flow like a Newtonian. Okay. So I have spent what almost hmm, half an hour just actually on this graph because if you understand this, then the rest would be easy. There's a lot of information here. We have to really, really understand this about flow behavior. Then the rest would be basically uh, easy. Okay, so far, okay, any questions so far before I proceed? That was good, Kitty. So I want more like Kitty answer, I mean, uh, very clearly. Okay? Thinking, okay? I want you, to, you all to think, not to memorize. Now, so far, we talk about the viscosity as a function of shear rate. When we increase the shear rate, what will happen to the viscosity? Decrease or increase? Or for Newtonian, it will be constant. Okay? When we talk about the effect of temperature. Effect of temperature, whether it's Newtonian or non-Newtonian, when we increase the temperature, always the viscosity would decrease. Okay? Except for some uh, samples like um, starch, when we increase the temperature, viscosity also would increase. Okay? But very few exceptions. And we talk about the dependence of viscosity as a function of shear rate. That is another factor here we have to consider. Time. A time factor. Remember, in the first class, Heraclitus say, everything flows. If we wait long enough. So there's a factor of time there. Everything can flow if we wait long enough. If you can live long enough, you can see even everything will flow. Even something that looks like solid or appears solid will flow. Because what appears as solid, actually, uh, they look like solid because they have very, very high viscosity. Yeah? The glass, the glass pin, the glass window, yeah? anything in the glass, in glassy form, they have viscosity in the range of 10 to the 12 to 10 to the maybe 14 pascal second. And water have a viscosity of point, have a viscosity of 1 milli pascal second, point zero zero one pascal second. So can you imagine the comparison, the viscosity of water and the viscosity of glass? So that's why the glass looks or appears like a solid because it has a very high viscosity. But then, if we wait long enough, actually they, 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 they flow, but we don't see it in real time, in a, in a, in a short time uh, span. Now, um, I've gone through, but now I want to elaborate more about non-Newtonian time independent and time dependent. And this, this is also very critical for you to understand. And I have explained here the viscosity of the fluid is dependent only, for Newtonian, it's dependent only on temperature, but independent of time. No matter how long you stir, the viscosity will still be constant. Shear rate, no matter how fast, how slow you stir, still the viscosity will be constant. That's the meaning of independent of time and shear rate. Then, for uh, I have also uh, explained this in the previous class, at each point on this line, the viscosity is constant. But the temperature, you will see that the viscosity would decrease as a function of temperature. If you now plot, in, instead of shear stress, you plot viscosity on the y-axis. Okay. 
at each temperature. Then the viscosity, when, when you plot against shear rate, the viscosity would be constant. That is the characteristic of Newtonian. So I have explained this twice. Okay. Now for example of Newtonian, we have juice, uh, liquid uh, vegetable oil, maybe milk, even honey. Honey looks viscous but still Newtonian. Because why? Because honey contains only small molecular weight sugars, small molecules. So small molecules, they don't, they don't, you know, entangle. But if you have big polymer, long chain polymer, they tend to, you know, entangle. So uh, usually this kind of any, any, any uh, fluid containing or any material containing large long chain polymer, they would display non-Newtonian behavior. You know, usually pseudoplastic or maybe other type. So the, how to tell whether, without using instrument, how to tell whether the, 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 the fluid or the sample or the product would display Newtonian or non-Newtonian. Non so generally, this is only general criteria. Generally, for Newtonian, you know, we have thin homogeneous liquid. Homogeneous means we don't have, you know, many things inside. We maybe just sugar. Low concentration of solutes or solids. Low concentration of low molecular weight solutes. So, if we have these uh, characteristics or criteria, then most likely the sample will display Newtonian behavior. Non-Newtonian. So non-Newtonian is the opposite of Newtonian, of course. So for Newtonian, the viscosity is independent of shear rate. For non-Newtonian, the viscosity is dependent on shear rate. So therefore, the, the relationship between shear stress and shear rate is not a constant. It's not a straight line through the through zero zero the viscosity of such fluids will therefore change change as a function of shear rate and temperature so now very clear newtonian the viscosity is only a function of temperature but is independent of shear rate non newtonian the viscosity is a function of both shear rate and temperature, meaning that the viscosity is different at different shear rate and different at different temperatures. So I hope that's not so complicated. Eh? Ah, now, come another factor, time. Time independent. It means that, okay, all this... Uh, the, the zero plastic type is non Newtonian time independent. Or we also use this term shear thinning. What is the meaning of shear thinning? It means that the viscosity decreases with increased shear rate. We increase the shear rate, the viscosity would decrease also example like salad dressing yogurt uh, spread can you think yeah uh, actually you can find many examples for pseudo plastic it's very common <coughs> for food Shear thickening also come under this group, non-Newtonian time independent. This is the opposite of shear thinning. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not very common. So we don't have to really worry about dilatant when, when we talk about food rheology. Uh, our, mainly we, we talk about Newtonian and we talk about pseudoplastic or the Bingham or Kesson plastic. But dilatant is not very common. It's more for non-food type. Plastic. Plastic here refers to 
other other than the pseudo plastic like Bingham plastic, Kesson plastic, and there are more plastic type behavior. But uh, if you read the book, there are many more actually. But maybe we just focus on a few. So any um, uh, the the plastic type like Kesson and Bingham exhibits yield stress. So we have defined the yield stress, which is a certain shear rate, or maybe to make it more complete, uh, a minimum shear rate, or a certain minimum shear rate. Sorry, shear stress. We we'll talk about shear stress. Must be applied before flow occurs. So usually, uh, this the 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 material that display yield stress appears very thick when we look at it it appears very thick yeah so example like tomato paste or some uh, tomato sauce chili sauce yeah what about things like peanut butter yeah jam those are very thick almost maybe we can say like a semi solid so even if you try to pour the peanut butter from the bottle and you try to tap 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 it, it won't flow so you need to get you know, a spoon or something to scoop it right scoop it and that is the minimum stress required of course we can measure that by using a rheometer we can measure so this is time independent this one is uh, okay still time independent so uh, what we can say or what we can summarize the viscosity of the fluid is independent of time but dependent on temperature and shear rate um, what what is actually the meaning of independent of time? We will see next, yeah. But for now, uh, maybe we just uh, take this shear thinning time independent, okay, or pseudo plastic. Now, this this line actually should start here. But again, because I transfer the PowerPoint from Windows to Mac, so Larry skate should start from here. That's a pseudo plastic, right? So the shear stress against shear rate. When we plot the shear stress against shear rate, it looks like this. When we plot, so at each point, we calculate the viscosity. Okay, we calculate the viscosity here, 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 and now we convert this graph into this form we plot the viscosity against shear rate and we can see clearly now what's the meaning of shear thinning because as we increase the shear rate the viscosity would decrease that is shear thinning up to this point clear because next i want to show i want to explain the meaning of time independent and time dependent but if you don't understand this no point continuing any question no good now shear thinning time independent we plot the viscosity at this point let's say we, we take a viscosity at a initial rate we read the viscosity okay we read the viscosity at that point and at that point there's at zero shear rate almost zero shear rate that's a viscosity at this shear rate x1 
that is the viscosity. X, X1 here red, that is a viscosity. And let's denote this viscosity as that symbol. Then another shear rate, X2, we read the viscosity. What do we call this symbol? U, mu. So at, mu, uh, at x2, mu2, at x1, mu1. Now, this is a viscosity against shear rate. Now we plot this graph now, viscosity against time. Against time. And when we at x, x1 shear rate, if we carry out this experiment separately now, okay, this is a separate experiment. In this experiment, we increase the shear rate, okay, from slow, faster, 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 faster. And we measure the viscosity. But this time now, we fix the shear rate at x1, okay, let's x1. But now, zero sec minute, we measure the viscosity. One minute, we measure the viscosity. Five minutes, measure. Ten minutes, measure. Fifteen minutes, measure. But it's constant. The shear rate is constant. Okay? And we will see that the viscosity will be constant as a function of time. And we repeat that for x2. And we find that the viscosity will be constant as a function of time. That is the meaning of non-Newtonian time independent. Okay? I can't find a better way to explain this. <laughs> so you better understand. you'll find there's no single book will find the way I explain. So I have to crack my head how to make it easy for the students to understand. Can you find any book that explains this? Except my book. Which until now, <laughs> I, I, I still not I have not managed yet to complete the whole book. So I don't know when it's going to be published. Now, what about, I have a few more minutes, okay. Shear thinning time dependent, so I, I just want to finish with this one. It's it. We repeat the same experiment again, okay. So at X1, shear rate, we carry out separate experiment now, yeah, constant shear rate, then we measure the viscosity now as a function of time. Zero minute, one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, yeah. But this time, we find that the viscosity changes as we increase the time. And we repeat again at X2, the viscosity changes. So, for this one, it's a shear thinning, non-Newtonian. Just now it's a shear thinning, time independent, or we call it pseudo-plastic. And this one, it's a shear thinning, but time dependent because the viscosity changes as a function of time. And we give a specific name for this, which is thixotropy. Okay, I'm happy now because I think I have managed to explain to you clearly, but I'm not sure whether it is clear to you. So please read more. And if you have any questions in the next lecture, please ask. We repeat the same exercise every day, every day, no, every lecture. I'll get uh, you know one, uh, one or two of you. First, I'll let you discuss. This is called this this uh, technique is called think, pair, in pair, and share. Then you share with the class. So this now has become a favorite uh, method for me to get you to talk and to think. Okay. 
So if you have any question next week on Monday, please, and I'll get one or two of you to explain again this thing to the class and see. You know, the best way to learn is to teach. The best way to learn is to teach. So if you teach your friend, you'll find their understanding will increase. And to teach is to learn twice. Best, the best way to learn is to teach. And to teach is to learn twice or more. Okay? Thank you very much. I'll see you on Monday, inshallah. Thank you.